Amen. Friends, let us bow our heads and our hearts in prayer. Gracious and loving God, we thank you so much for the gift of this new day. And we thank you, God, for this opportunity that we have to come into your house, Lord, to gather together in your presence and in the power of your love. We pray, God, now that you would open our ears, open our minds, open our hearts as your word is read and spoken and proclaimed today. God, touch us with the power of your Holy Spirit that we might know you, that we might love you, and that we might live for you today and always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, the title of the message this morning is called The Land Between. The Land Between. And our scripture reading is from the book of Exodus, chapter 33. I think it says in the bulletin, starting with verse 12. Uh, actually, I'm going to start with verse 7 and uh, read through the end of the chapter. I invite all of you now to listen and to hear God's word. Now, Moses used to take the tent and pitch it outside the camp, far off from the camp. He called it the tent of the meeting. And everyone who sought the Lord will go out, would go out to the tent of the meeting, which was outside the camp. Whenever Moses went out to the tent, all the people would rise and stand, each one of them, at the entrance of their tents and watch Moses until he had gone into the tent. When Moses entered the tent, the pillar of cloud would descend and stand at the entrance, and the Lord, the Lord would speak with Moses. When all the people saw the pillar of the cloud standing at the entrance of the tent, all the people would rise and bow down, all of them, at the entrance of their tent. Thus the Lord used to speak to Moses, Face to face, the Lord used to speak to Moses face to face as one speaks to a friend. Then he would return to the camp, but his young assistant, Joshua, son of Nun, would not leave the tent. Moses said to the Lord, See, you have said to me, Bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found favor in my sight. Now if I have found favor in your sight, show me your ways, so that I may know you and find favor in your sight. Consider too that this nation is your people. God said, my presence will go with you. And I will give you rest. And he said to him, If your presence will not go, do not carry us up from here. For how should it be known that I have found favor in your sight, I and your people, unless you go with us? In this way we shall be distinct, I and your people, from every people on the face of the earth. The Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing that you have asked. For you have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. Moses said, show me your glory, I pray. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you and will proclaim before you the name, the Lord. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. But he said, you cannot see my face. For no one shall see me and live. And the Lord continued, See, there is a place by me where you shall stand on the rock. And while my glory passes by, I will put you in the cleft of the rock. And I will cover you with my hand 
until I have passed by. Then I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. Friends, the grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God endures forever. Amen. Amen. The other day, I was driving in my car to a meeting down in Detroit, and I got stuck in traffic on Mound Road. Mound Road was all the way down to one lane, and I'm sitting there in a long line of cars, and I realize I'm going to be here a while, and this is going to be a long drive to the meeting that I had to get to. And so I looked in my car for a CD, and I pulled one out of my Visor, and I thought, well, let me just listen to this CD, to this message for a while. And the CD that I happened to pull out was called The Land Between. The Land Between. And it wasn't long before the speaker was speaking that I knew this message was for me that somehow this was a word that God wanted me to hear. And so I'd like to share it with you this morning. You see, the land between is the difficult times of change and transition that we all must go through in life. The land between is entering that time of chaos that occurs between what is familiar and known to us and what is unfamiliar and unknown. It is the time between the death of something old and the birth of something new. It is the pain of labor before a child is born. It is the time, perhaps, that Christ spent in the tomb before his resurrection. It is the time that we spend in the wilderness before entering into the promised land. Sometimes it is entered into suddenly and it is thrust upon us such as the unexpected loss of a loved one, a death, or perhaps the unexpected loss of a job or other life change. Sometimes it happens gradually, such as during the battle, long illness, or maybe a difficult family situation, or a hard relationship that is difficult to understand. It is almost always a time of heartache, a time of grieving, a time of challenge, and a time of searching. But it is also a time of growth, a time of new beginnings and understanding. It is the birth of something new it is the butterfly emerging from the cocoon. It is also a time of hope. That's where we find the people of Israel in our scripture passage this morning. The people of Israel are in the land between. You see, they've been freed from slavery in the land of Egypt, and they are journeying onward to the promised land, but they are not there yet. They are not there yet. They are in the wilderness. Just a chapter ago, they are camped at Mount Sinai. Moses goes up onto the mountain to receive the Ten Commandments. We know the story. Moses is delayed in coming back down. And so what do the people do? They build a golden calf. 
They're not too sure about Moses and this God that they've been called to follow. And they seek their own way. And God's fury rains down upon them. And we wonder, how could they be so fickle? How could they be so stupid? Yet, if we reflect on this too long, we know that too often we do the same thing, don't we? We try to go our own way. They are a people caught in the land between. And so we come to our scripture passage this morning, the next chapter. And at the beginning of this chapter, God tells Moses that God will not go with him into the promised land, but rather God has decided that he would send an angel instead. And the angel would go with the people into the promised land, but not God himself. And so we come to this curious chapter, this curious story that we find in the Bible, and we find Moses actually arguing and negotiating and debating with God. Just this past week, Jamie and I were on another drive, and I passed a church sign that read, you can argue with God, but you just can't win. <laughs> that was on the church sign. You can argue with God, but you just can't win. And I kind of smiled as I read that passage because, or read that sign, because I'm thinking this passage that we're looking at kind of says something different. Maybe we can argue and struggle with God. That's what we see Moses doing in our scripture passage this morning. It says, the Lord used to speak to Moses face to face as one speaks to a friend. Picture that relationship of Moses speaking to God as a friend speaks to another friend. That's the kind of relationship that God longs to have with each one of us. That's the kind of relationship that God longs to have with you. Jesus says, I no longer call you my servants, but now I call you what? My friend. My friend. This is a glimpse of a picture of a deep personal relationship where we can lay our heart open before God and argue and wrestle with God, and God is not offended. That's the kind of relationship that God longs for. Moses says to the Lord, See, you have said to me, Bring this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. And Moses said to God, If your presence will not go, do not carry us up from here. For how shall it be known that I have found favor in your sight, I and your people, unless you go with us? That's a legitimate question, isn't it? Moses is crying out to God, where are you? How can we go on without you, without your presence with us? And friends, I know that oftentimes we ask the same thing in the difficult passages of our lives. Where are you, God? Why did you lead us here? How could you bring us to this place? I cannot pass through this difficulty unless I know that you go with me. And the good news, the good news of this passage is that Moses argues with God and God relents. God changes his mind and says, indeed, he will go and lead the people of Israel into the promised land. God says, my presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. The Lord says to Moses, I will do the very thing 
that you have asked, for you have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. Did you get that? <coughs> Moses wrestles with and argues with God, and God changes his mind. You see, God longs for this deep, personal relationship where we recognize God's presence, where we can be honest, where we can argue and search and ask, where are you, God? And God responds, I am with you, and I will go with you. Then, strangely, the discussion continues. Moses makes one more request. Moses says, show me your glory, Lord, I pray. Moses says, I want to see your face. I want to experience you and see you directly. And that's how it is, isn't it, for all of us? We long to see God directly. We want all of the answers. We want to know why. Why? And even here, God relents. God says that he will place Moses in a rock and will cover Moses with his hand as God passes by. You cannot see my face, the Lord says, but you will see my back. In other words, we may not see God completely or know all the answers fully. But God will let us know that He is there. This reminds me of 1 Corinthians 13. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part I see only in part here on this earth, but then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. You see, our desire is to have all the answers, to see God directly, but that's not going to happen on this side of eternity. We do not have all the answers but we are assured of God's presence with us always, always. So what can we take away from this passage this morning? First, there will be times when we must all pass through the wilderness. We must all pass through the wilderness of life at different times. It cannot be avoided it cannot be escaped. But it's in those times of transition, those times of challenge and change, those times when we wrestle with God, is the times that we grow and come to new understanding of faith in our relationship with God. The second thing we can take away from this passage is it is okay to wrestle to argue with God, to cry out before God and to say, where are you? God invites us into this kind of relationship, a deeply per personal relationship, where God calls us friend, knows everything about us, and chooses to love us anyway. God knows our name. God knows your name. And promises his rest, his comfort, his guidance, his love. So what are we to do? What can we do when we enter the wilderness of life? We can seek God's face. 
Moses' prayer is, Now if I have found favor, favor in your sight, show me your ways that I may know you and find favor in your sight. Friends, when we find ourselves in the land between, trust that God is at work. We believe in a good and loving God, and it is a good story. We don't have all the answers, but we know that God loves us with a deep and abiding love, and God calls us his friend. As you travel through the wilderness, know that God goes with you. And friends, as we travel through the wilderness together, know that God is here. And God indeed goes with us. Thanks be to God. Amen.